Dwayne The Rock Johnson, a former football player, an athlete, a pro wrestler, an actor, a writer, a comedian, and many more things that The Rock does in his life. Well, we're going to have a what if episode on The Rock, and that is what if The Rock is a full timer in the WWE. We're gonna focus on this what if, but we're gonna also have him actually partake in a part time schedule because of his films. But we're gonna more focus on the years that he is actually absent in pro wrestling. So this years that I will actually involve is either from 2003 up to 2011 or we're gonna end at 2015 or possibly till now which I can't decide because we can't actually see the longevity of one's character if he will pursue his other ambitions or he will stay in pro wrestling forever in this what if in real life well he left actually in the WWE in 2001 to have some movies even though he is a part-timer from then he actually returned in some programs and then he actually goes back to Hollywood to actually garner his success that we actually seen today he's partaking a lot of movies that we seen in television from the mummy into the fast and the furious into the tooth fairy into Jumanji well, you will see The Rock's face almost everywhere in Hollywood. And even though he is also the highest paid actor in Hollywood. So now, we're gonna focus on the timeline where The Rock was actually a full timer starting in 2003. Which this time, it will actually affect also Triple H Reign of Terror. So, The Rock actually turns face after his feud with Goldberg because he's gathering some positive reaction from the fans after his performances he's gonna challenge the world champion Triple H while Booker T lost to Triple H at Wrestlemania and he will actually help The Rock to fend off Evolution just to lesser the number cost of the Evolution members by this time, I think they were 3 or 4. I'm not sure if Batista was injured at this time. But let's assume that Batista is actually injured. So, The Rock, Booker T, and Goldust will actually help each other to fend off Evolution. In which, after that, The Rock wins the world title from Triple H. So, The Rock wins the world title from Triple H. And then the two will have a rematch. And then... Somehow, some way, some shape or form, Goldberg will actually be inserted in the World Heavyweight Championship picture because of his popularity during this time. So, after a series of matches, Goldberg, unlike in real life, he will win the title much later in this timeline and Goldberg will actually drop the title in 2004 again to Triple H. So that means the title run of Goldberg was pushed to 2003, the end of 2003, and then Triple H will win it on the first two months of 2004 before he can feud with the Royal Rumble winner Chris Benoit and Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn Michaels during that time in 2003, well, he is feuding it either Randy Orton or Ric Flair just to have his time on Monday Night Raw. He is still feuding with the Evolution, but he is not involved with the World Heavyweight Championship scene until 2004 again. So yeah, that much also in San Antonio never happened with the tease of Shawn Michaels winning the World Championship for the second time, which actually Triple H retained because of the draw. So after that, the Rock actually will be drafted to SmackDown and he will have also a feud with his former rivals Kurt Angle, The Undertaker, 
on Friday Night Smackdown just to fill up his time during 2004. And Eddie Guerrero will actually drop the title to The Rock at this time instead of JBL because The Rock is actually gathering ratings for SmackDown and he is actually the face of SmackDown and also at this time John Cena is actually rising from the mid-guard scene he is actually getting noticed as the United States Champion so the build up for Cena is actually starting also here The Rock will actually have a title run from 2004 up to 2005 because of his popularity which it will have a John Cena versus The Rock feud in a much earlier stage by this time also we are not sure if the crowd support will actually be on The Rock or Cena's favor at this time if they actually have a feud on 2005 but let's assume that the people actually supports The Rock and booings John and they boo John Cena. So at WrestleMania, a heel John Cena wins the title from The Rock. And then The Rock, after that match, will have a time off to actually either heal his injuries or take some film, which he will actually be absent for the rest of the year. So 2005. The Rock is actually absent until the first part of 2006, which he will return. After Mysterio wins the Rumble, while well, The Rock will not actually involve himself in that match. Instead, he will try to challenge The Undertaker at WrestleMania because he is not fighting The Undertaker at WrestleMania before. He doesn't have the match with the undertaker before and he wants to test himself if he can actually defeat the undertaker and it's also a fresh thing for the rock to challenge for the streak which eventually he will lose at wrestlemania because the undertaker streak still continues and the rock will actually have different programs so the rock will actually be drafted again to monday night raw where Cena is the top dog and yeah they will have an another feud which they will tease at this moment and then as for Triple H well he will actually go with the Generation X at this time with his reun with Triple H and Shawn Michaels being reunited and as for the main pay-per-view stands well Edge, The Rock and Cena will actually feud for the title which eventually Edge will win the title because of heel tactics. Cena and The Rock is actually faces at this feud with some actually not sure who to cheer it. Who to cheer with because both are popular, half are cheering Cena, half are cheering The Rock and then majority are booing Edge because he is the heel at this point. Triple H actually turned face and he is actually enjoying his time with Shawn Michaels pranking the McMahons so that feud will actually stretch the year and then so RVD will also cash in his money in the bank so RVD will have a small title reign also this year which RVD also will lose again to Edge because Edge is the world champion and even though ECW debuted on this time well same as real life well it doesn't have the same impact as the old ECW the WWE ECW and then The Rock as also will have some time in this year to have his time off yet again to take a film during this time and then he will actually be absent from 2006 up to the half of 2007 because even though he is a full-timer at this case well he's actually more of you know a part-timer but he's actually performing in the WWE even though he has his movie commitments so that's we're gonna assume in this timeline The Rock returns in 2007 and he will have a program 
with the new WWE Champion Randy Orton. And yes, The Rock will put Orton over just like Chris Jericho did in 2007. And then he will feud with another dream match which is actually Batista at this point. They will have a lot of dream matches in this timeline which The Rock will actually appear on both shows due to the fact that WWE is actually rewarding them with a lot of dream matches. So that's what The Rock will do in this timeline. Also, in 2008, The Rock will win the World Heavyweight Championship yet again because the WWE title is stacked with Orton, Triple H, and Cena at this point. So they will actually put The Rock yet on SmackDown to win the World Heavyweight Championship because he will actually have feuds with The Undertaker, Edge, and Batista. He will actually be involved in that rivalry of theirs and then they will have a lot of dream matches here. They will have a lot of new stipulations and new ideas for matches. And then yeah, fast forward to 2009, well The Rock is going to be the World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania 25. And during that time, well he's actually promoting his movie. And he is actually also inducting Austin in the Hall of Fame which he actually made the speech about both performances on WrestleManias that Austin actually beat him on WrestleMania 15, 17 and he actually beat Austin on WrestleMania 19 where he actually thanks Austin because that final match between the two actually led to Austin's retirement which actually gave him the most thing that he actually get over with the rivalry like he Austin put him over to be the superstar and then he actually win world titles after Austin left and then he will actually have a lot of moments with Austin discussing on his Hall of Fame speech and as for WrestleMania 25 well The Rock is actually retaining the title and then the next pay-per-view he will drop the title yet again and then yes he will go to raw and he will actually win the wwe title at this time so yeah we actually have the rock in 2009 winning the world heavyweight championship and the wwe championship and he will actually not taking time off in this year instead he will take time off in 2010 to make a film promote it and so on and so forth and he will drop the title before 2009 ends either to whoever the WWE subjected babyface or heel at this time well let's assume that he will actually drop the title to a heel or to who is venomous and he who is actually punting heads at this time well, he is the venomous Orton unlike what he faced on 2005 and 2006 here in this timeline in this earlier stage 2007 where Orton is actually more of a rookie this time Orton is actually punting heads destroying careers and putting people out of wrestling for a lot of months that he actually put them on the hospital kayfably which at this time if randy orton destroys the rock in 2009 for the wwe championship that means that the rock will drop the title to this venomous orton which after that match the legacy with randy orton destroys the rock also putting him out of commission and thus the rock having time off in the end of 2009 and then he will promote his movies throughout 2010 and in 2010 he will have a year off which the wwe will have a lot of superstars being formed at this point well he will not actually be involved that much here just like in real life he will have a guest matches and he will actually have 
a part-time schedule work which he actually wrestles once or twice a year depending on the schedule just like in real life we will have him also the undertaker or triple h schedule where he actually have a mini program and then a mini feud or a huge feud which actually lasts for two months or a month just for him to actually take his off and then do his movies so yeah and that's what happened from the rock in 2010 and onwards which The Rock will also have a lot of exposure to the new talent and he will actually be interested to going to the WWE if someone needs to get over like for example if The Rock wants to put someone on a bigger popularity just like whoever he chooses to well, he will put them over at a big event, either at WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or the big four pay-per-views, Royal Rumble, or whatever. So that's what gonna rock. That's the thing that The Rock will do as of now, 2010 and above. And yeah, he actually have a lot of dream matches here on this timeline. He fought. There are guys like Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, John Cena much earlier, Batista, Edge, and a lot of superstars from the 2000s era, Jeff Hardy, and many more to mention. And also, he won more world titles. So he won two World Heavyweight Championships, or three by this point. And a WWE Championship, which actually Orton took his head off K Fabley just to win the title yet again. Because at this time, we put Orton over as in over because of his persona in 2009 where he is actually a destructive heel who's wanting everyone on the head and destroying careers just like what he did in real life. So... The Rock actually have a part-time schedule from 2010 and above. Well, I did a what-if timeline where he is actually a semi full-timer which he actually appears on different occasions and a lot of time compared to the real life that he actually has in WWE because it's also to help the talent by that point and he will actually have a good rub with the roster he will actually look for the superstars who we actually want to work with and then they two will actually bring the best out of each other also in this timeline to connect in my first ever what if his final program is actually with the wwe championship but he is actually chasing for it just like in my first what if while The Rock will not win the WWE title in Royal Rumble 2013, instead, he will actually have a chase for it until the main event of WrestleMania 29, where Cena defeats The Rock and CM Punk at the same time, which The Rock and Cena will have their celebratory on the stage, and then the two actually raise hands to end WrestleMania, which receive a lot of booze and if I want to be this guy who I wanted to change that thing and made CM Punk a huge thing for that event and that is I don't know if it is overbooking or what in your mind well he will actually get out and get his old WWE Championship hit both Cena and The Rock to receive the grandest pop at Wrestlemania because he destroyed the two superstars at the end of Wrestlemania and then after that The Rock will be involved more smaller roles in the following years and then as for Pop he got the Wrestlemania moment that he actually won he stands tall even though he doesn't win the title and retain the title Wrestlemania 29 well, he got the title and he's actually posing with it. 
and also in that match they actually promoted a new design for the belt which actually punk is actually having an entrance with this current belt the Cena's belt and then after that match they debuted this new design which Cena actually wins with and then he celebrates with and then after that match Punk actually have his old title hits and smacks them both so yeah that's the end of Wrestlemania 29 I know it's full of controversy controversy but if you can dream something and you can put it on a what if and to gather heat I'm not sure if they will cheer actually punk here or they will boo him the hell out of here well that's the Wrestlemania 29's ending for this timeline with actually punk having a 500 plus day of a title reign and re he received a main event of Wrestlemania and then after that he will take time off both him and The Rock will actually have time offs for Punk to heal his injury and for The Rock to take films yet again and then for The Rock he will actually appear on an episode of Raw just to have his movie promoted to also make this movie about Paige and then to make a lot of things for the programs that WWE wants him to do and as for CM Punk well he heals totally from his injuries and return at Royal Rumble 2014 so after that he returned at Royal Rumble 2014 and then they will notice that whoever receives the great pop at Royal Rumble 2014, the final three men of that Royal Rumble match are is Batista, CM Punk, and Daniel Bryan. And as for that, well, whoever got the biggest pop at that night, the biggest cheers, well, he will win the Royal Rumble in 2014 so that we will have the booing that Batista actually have in 2014 and then labeling him as Bautista later on, later on as Bautista and as for CM Punk well he is actually more involved in the main events at this time and he is treated well because he actually performed a good match for The Rock and then this actually led to CM Punk gathering more main event spots and then he is actually more happy he actually got the healing that he wants he doesn't have the stop infection he doesn't fight the WWE doctor that actually led him to that disease by giving him a lot of medicines that actually doesn't make sense so yeah this ends our timeline this ends our what if did you like this what if i hope you do subscribe for more videos like this videos comment down below and share this video thank you for watching and this is what if the rock perform in a semi full-time basis thank you for watching and this is mike rato